In America, lots of people want their 15 minutes of fame. Janet Jackson has had a lifetime of it. But as she enters her 30s, the tabloid spotlight is taking a toll on Janet and her family. They write to her. They have the power of the pen. I guess at the end, it's about media, it's about press, it's about papers, it's about sales. And that's what's so harsh about it. Janet is one Jackson who stays above the fray and always tries to be a role model. She becomes the leading celebrity spokeswoman for General Colin Powell's America's Promise, a foundation dedicated to helping America's youth. She has such a unique spirit. Jan loves people, and it's about always about pleasing everybody else. But Janet's caring public persona, all poise and politeness, is hiding a lot of pain. Things that really affected me as a child came to a head, and either I was going to take a path of destruction or take the path and deal with it and work my way through it. Janet always deals with adversity by getting back to work. Writing and recording The Velvet Rope is very therapeutic. I didn't realize how therapeutic because I didn't realize all of the things that she was kind of going through. She realizes that it is therapy because when she has a problem or she has a thought, she writes a song. I just get so all confused. I'm scared to The Velvet Rope is Janet's most personal recording yet. This time, the work isn't enough to get rid of the blues. But at a trip to a desert spa, Janet meets up with a cowboy who changes her life. He's a cowboy. He's an older man who, who understood he said a few things to me, and I just broke out in tears. It was as if he knew my life story and knew exactly what I was feeling. Believe it or not, something told me to trust him, and I did, and that's where it all started. He definitely saved me. He was very instrumental in that. Janet's anonymous cowboy no doubt learns that her relationship with husband Rene Elizondo is broken. When Rene files for divorce, it's not only the first time people find out the marriage is in trouble, it's the first time they hear that Janet was married at all. The thing that amazed me, though, Janet, is you managed to keep a marriage secret for... A very long time. How did you manage to do that? You don't tell anyone. <laughs> what was the reason you found that that should be so important? Well, we both decided to do that and uh, to live a normal life. Renee sues for a large share of Janet's estimated $100 million fortune. I think her success went to his head. This is my sister. And, and to hurt her, it's like we all felt it. I've learned a lot. Um, and I have a major issue with trust. At 34, Janet says she has only dated two men in her life and married both of them. Marriage just isn't for everybody, and I'm starting to think maybe it's not for me. Um, but I don't know. If it's God's plan, it's going to happen. Sometimes it just bites you in the ass, and when you're not looking for it, and the next thing you know, you're blind again, and just ga ga goo goo and that definitely is me. Janet has stepped out of a deep funk right into a messy divorce. But she keeps right on working. She stars in Nutty Professor 2, The Clumps, opposite Eddie Murphy. Comedy may not seem like Janet's thing, but she started her career almost 30 years earlier doing just that. And now that her marriage and divorce are public, those who know her best say a sense of humor is Janet's best kept secret. She's just a normal girl that likes to have fun and she does all the goofy, strange, funny things that everybody else does, really. It, it's just that you can't imagine Janet doing them. The premiere of The Clumps is one of Janet's first big events since her divorce. She needs a date, and the man on her arm causes quite a stir. It's the man she fired as her manager 15 years earlier, her father, Joseph. I thought he was so freaking cute that night, the way he was acting. He was so adorable. But, you know, it's, it's, you may not forget what happens in the past, but it's, it's about what's happening now. Janet says, listen to the message in her music if you want to understand where she is in her life. In 2001 on All For You, Janet is in a very good place.
she's much more sassy and sexually charged and, and, and having fun. And I think that you feel the liberation in her that she's not married anymore. You just see such a huge contrast from darkness into light. Janet says she's never done the dating thing. Now, in her mid-30s, she's on her own and ready to give it a try. Jan was really naive for a long, long time about life. This is the first time that she's been by herself and to herself to even begin to enjoy life. It's all, it's now it's about Jan. It's about Janet. Janet may always have her issues, but she says she still believes in love. And one of these days, she hopes she'll even learn to love herself. I haven't gotten to the love part, but I, you know, I've gotten to the point where I like myself. I've never been as happy as I am with myself, ever before in my life. Janet broke out of the box and was able to touch the world while she expressed herself. This is a woman who's on a noble journey, who's sort of putting it all out there. She is a tremendous star with tremendous success. Enough said. who adore seeing Janet Jackson in concert rave about her supercharged performances. But according to the singer, they're taking a toll. She is said to have grown tired of living out of a suitcase and is taking a break from touring, one that could be permanent. I'm Chris Jansing. Thanks for being with us. For information on upcoming programs or to subscribe to our newsletter, go to prime.msnbc.com. Thank you.